Welcome back, welcome back. My name is Zanem Vula and you're watching Girl Boss SA YouTube. Thank you for joining us. Today we have a very special guest. We're talking to our favorite YFM presenter, Ukutso Teledi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. So what I wanted to actually talk to you about, because, you know, as a role model for so many black girls, I don't know if you realize how many black girls look up to you and listen to you. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do for context and how you got started? Okay, so I'm Kuto Teledi. Um, let me start with my intro. Loko babu tisa korofama na manu vajelo korofama na Kuto Teledi. YFM DJ, MC, um, voiceover artist. Uh, love spinning cars as well, I really do. Um, I'm a car fanatic. And a person who loves to motivate. So not necessarily a motivational speaker. More of a, like you say, in conversation. And understanding people's energies um, and being around positive energies and that and, and that's the person that I am so got into radio geez I didn't even want to be in the radio space per se I always dreamed of being a personality a media personality on TV um, when I was growing up I'd always read the box the back of a, a cereal box you know and I'd always try and present like I'm on you know KTV Yo TV so reading the cereal box in the words yeah um, and my family knows is that there's this love uh, and passion for just being on screen and, and, and being this energetic person and bubbly. Um, and I studied at Monash um, Media and Communications, after that went through to Boston Media House. And in my first year, our lecturer um, asked us to, to explain our name without saying our name, you know, on stage. So got onto stage and um, obviously my name means peace. Just trying to give them case peace. And someone was like, Kuto. After that lecture class, this is our first class. Um, the lecturer came up to me and said, you really should get into, into radio. So I went to Boston Media House, particularly to study journalism, PR, uh, you know, commercial law, uh, anything but radio yeah. and that radio thing bit me the moment our lecturer said Kuto you need to be on radio your voice is golden there's something about it I was like what do you mean yeah. I said no there's something about your voice you need to be a part of you know radio um, in that moment going through to my next class he was saying look there is a open day that's happening we need a voiceover artist I was like <laughs> I've never done a voiceover. I don't think <laughs> I'm the person. Please just do it. So we did it, went into the booth. That same voiceover calling out people to come through to Boston Media House aired on 5FM, YFM, um, a few radio stations. Yeah. And the month when it was launched, um, it played on YFM and Mo Flavor, who was a host of a show called Flavor in the Morning, called me and I didn't know how he got my number. Um, so I moved from, from Mpumalanga to Nelspreet, um, uh, from Mpumalanga rather, in Nelspreet, then moved to Joburg, and then all of a sudden, a Mo Flavor, who I listen to every day going to school, you know, and I couldn't believe that this guy is calling me on my phone. I'm like, oh my gosh. Okay. So he called me and he said, I got your numbers from Boston. I, I, I also studied at Boston. Heard your, your ad play on the, the station and really wanted to ask if you'd love to to come through and um, drop off your demo. Did you even have what? a demo at the time? I didn't even know what a demo was wow. at the time. I didn't understand what was what was being said. Yeah. Um, so I went back to Boston and my lecturer and the principal and I said, look, Mo Flavors asked me to record a demo. I don't know what this is. I don't know what to do. Please help me. And they said, no worries. Let's go into a booth. Let's record a demo. So they taught me in a space of 10 minutes trying to compile something because he needed it urgently. Wow. Um, and I didn't know what they were looking for at the time, whether it was a co-host, whether it was just a voice, an extra voice, mm -hmm. um, an entertainment voice. I didn't understand. Said, Please just bring through your demo. I said, we'll make it happen. And at that time, I... I was going through another interview to become an air hostess. So I got something with the air and frequency. So my dad passed away, so I thought, you know what, to get closer to my dad, let me just be in the air, you know, be an right. air hostess. Mm -hmm. That happened, got the job. So it was this great air hostessing opportunity versus, you know, radio and what I'm hearing about the pay with radio. I'm like, ah, but 
something said, I felt like my dad was saying, go for it. Mm -hmm. Go for it, record this demo and drop it off the next day. So we compiled this demo and um, yeah, I went through and met Mo Flavor for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, such an amazing human being from on air mm -hmm. to off air and seeing this amazing man saying he would love for me to join his team. So I gave him my demo and we got to meet the programming manager at that time and, and who still is now. Um, they didn't even listen to my demo, they just said you start tomorrow. Now when their tomorrow was my 21st birthday. So it was just, it was so just crazy how everything was just coming together. Yeah. Um, then I got to shadow the show um, with the current team. And um, yeah, on the 1st of April 2012, eight years ago, um, that's when I started my radio journey. Uh, first time on radio on a breakfast show. Yeah. Uh, was a co-host and traffic presenter. Um, and throughout the years, been um, co-hosting uh, breakfast, drive time, got my own weekend show. Um, moved to lunchtime weekday now doing weekdays 9 a.m. to 12 on YFM you are just living your destiny like and yeah. just the synchronicity of all of it as well getting it on your birthday yeah. and feeling the energy of your dad kind of just pushing and supporting yeah. you through that that's so crazy and the crazy thing to me is like your voice like you really sound like that <laughs> like, I, I, I was like when you first started talking to me open I was like oh my gosh so believe it or not, I went for speech therapy, so I had braces for about eight years. Really? Um, I used to suck my two fingers. Uh, oh fun my fact. God. And my teeth, oh my gosh, it was a buck. Oh um, so I got the braces, I also got the headgear, you know the whole headgear, no wore glasses, I still wear glasses now. So when they were restructuring my teeth, obviously my speech from the lisp, now I needed to know how to pronounce words properly, mm -hmm. speak properly with, with this new you know, shift in the mouth. Mm -hmm. um, so I went through speech therapy for the longest time, I think it was for six years with the braces, yeah. as my teeth were starting to get together, losing that lisp. Um, so the speech therapy I won't even lie to you really really helped in terms of announcing words mm. um, I mean even till this day my mom will listen to the show <laughs> and she'll be like um, and I call her after the show so you don't have to speak like you're on radio <laughs> you're talking to your, your mom I know so it's just been it's it's been in me um, the deep voice I was teased about it for the longest time growing up in high school and primary school always had this deep voice yeah. um, and I, I guess, yeah, <laughs> you think it works? Yeah. Come on. So, because now it's paying your bills. No, it's, it's really gonna, it like, it really comes through on the radio. I feel like it just, it, it feels, if you listen to you in like a car, it just fills the car. It's like really a really great that. voice. Thank you. And I really wanted to ask you about sure. that as well, because I feel like, you know, because when I was interacting, my agent was like, sent me once on a, on a voiceover audition. Sure. Because she's like, yeah, you sound great she'll get this job mm -hmm. so I went to audition for it and like I know I can speak well mm -hmm. but like that is not an easy job it's, it's not yeah. like a, an instant thing so yeah. what would you say that a girl has to do kind of in preparation especially girls that look up to you sure. and, and would like to do what you do what yeah. is it that they can do in preparation for that line of work look I think it starts with being honest with yourself whether or not this is something that you want to do I think the worst thing is being forced into something that people believe you're great at uh, maybe you're not um, just because someone has a great voice it doesn't mean they want to use it for that purpose be it voiceovers be it radio, be it TV, um, be it presenting, it doesn't matter what it is. But um, I think it starts with you because then you stop picking at the, the small things like you're saying now. Someone complimented your voice and suggested you do voices. But now you already say, it's not easy, it's hard. But once you get into it and you feel like, actually, I want to do it, it becomes something where you realize maybe I was born for this yeah. um, it becomes a passion mm -hmm. uh, you learn mm -hmm. you know there's so much learning to do with with voiceovers it's not just getting a script you need to learn you know when you need to emphasize a word express smile while you're speaking because essentially what you're doing as a voiceover artist is playing with the theater of the mind mm -hmm. you you're literally taking people through a journey with your voice mm -hmm. so it's understanding your passions the little things that you're great at and if you want to get into something like voiceovers um, again it was something that I didn't even think of getting into mm -hmm. um, but I, I researched I learned I I studied I went to school for it mm -hmm. um, 
and also just believing actually this voice could do something mm. this voice has a purpose yeah. and once you understand the purpose that you have in anything that you want to do mm. um, that's when you take and run with it because there's only one person that can do it great and that's you yeah. um, and you ask for advice you ask for feedback mm. so in all honesty as much as people think that especially with radio that it's all about the voice mm. it's so easy to, to to turn on the radio and be gravitated uh, by someone's voice yeah. but the most important thing is personality as well mm. you can have the best voice in the world you can be smooth gravel doesn't matter the tone but the personality and the character counts so much that's where it comes very tricky with radio to say oh, this one I'm not sure about radio yeah. Yeah. the voice is amazing mm -hmm. and that's that's on you to learn to grow you can't be a duplicate of someone else mm -hmm. but someone can say you sound similar mm -hmm. but not necessarily that you're a duplicate of this person because why your personality comes through mm -hmm. so it's just pinpointing what you're great at ask for advice Google is free yeah um, and also sliding into someone's DMS and emailing and asking for advice do that yeah. do that yeah yeah that's so crazy. Yeah. Being a black woman um, with a with a platform mm. to speak out, do you feel like a certain level of pressure or responsibility mm. to, you know, speak on on issues that matter? To have a certain stance when it comes into, are you censored? Do you feel censored sometimes, or do you feel like you're actually given, you know, the leeway to say what you really think about? Them? Look, there'll always be, especially in the entertainment industry, um, management roles will always have to have a guideline. As a radio presenter we have a guideline to go by um, we have to be aware of you know systems and complaints that could happen yeah. um, so that's where the sense sense of part comes in yeah. but you you need to be authentic and organic to who you are mm -hmm. so conversations it's really important to understand and for me growing each and every single day to understand the platform um, and not taking it for granted yeah. I think that's the biggest thing and we learn I'm as human as you are yeah. I might uh, not be actively speaking about something that might mean the world to you yeah. but I'll get there mm -hmm. you know there's 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 a journey I'm personally going yeah. through and there's a journey that I need to consider the other thousands of people that are going Going through as well mm -hmm. so it's a journey I'm learning we learning from each other but yes indeed you 100% correct in understanding the platform that you have mm -hmm. the voice that you have the change you can um, um, you know implement yeah. and correct and rectify and understand make people understand it's not about me yeah it's about you it's about the person listening right mm -hmm. it's about the person following it's about the person researching so for for me personally I think in blessed an opportunity to have a platform to speak mm -hmm. um, it's very important to understand what message you're putting across yeah. if it is who you are and and not tailor-made because you can sense when someone is speaking all from a script tailor-made um, yeah. so that those are the things that you need to really consider but I think um, the platform that we use to not take it for granted the conversations that I have on my show mm -hmm. is very women orientated why because I am woman yeah. I believe in woman empowerment um, and giving back as much as I can and this platform has allowed me to do that through conversation mm -hmm. I think it's it's so incredible to have people trusting your platform to be able to be honest this is my problem mm -hmm. um, whatever it may be what we go through as women physically emotionally um, and opening up yourself to me and for me to open myself to you mm -hmm. um, and just knowing that the platform isn't for me to hog the platform is for me to be able to open up to you yeah. um, and that's that's what I appreciate about why femme and the platform that they've allowed me to have to be open honest um, to not be judgmental to be unapologetic unafraid and ashamed of who you are um, and I'm growing that with the listener mm -hmm. um, I'm understanding the platform with the listener mm -hmm. um, again I'm human I'm not perfect mm -hmm. I've, got, I've made many mistakes um, but that's when we become real and honest mm -hmm. about the society that we live in about our country about the issues <clears throat> sorry that we're facing and going through um, and yeah definitely not taking advantage or, or for granted your platform yeah, yeah. you can't be perfect perfect is also unrelatable 100 <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah who are some of your biggest role models she was um, Mo Flavor has to be one of them yeah. he's a big 
mentor, role model, inspiration, um, motivation for me personally. I cannot go through a conversation without bringing up his name, especially when it comes to my career and my journey, uh, my mentor, my inspiration, um, and one person that I really look up to as well, um, in line with Mo Flavor, he's still number one, DJ Fresh, Mas Chabanglov was a big inspiration to me. Um, Pearl Mudiadie is, she was um, a big inspiration in my life. Um, and my dad, uh, look, my dad passed away when I was really young um, and not having a father figure in my life has been really, really tough. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I believe that I move with my dad, even though he's not here in the physical, mm -hmm. um, but all that I do, I do for him. So um, all that he, he left for myself and my family and my siblings, um, that inspires me. That's mm -hmm. my motivation to keep going, to work hard for my mother, um, siblings, mm -hmm. cousins. Um, so my dad, even though he's not here in the physical, spiritually, he moves me, yeah. he shifts me, he, he inspires me, yeah. And staying connected like that yeah. is so good for career because people yeah. think that you know your connection to the spirit is separate from the rest of you, especially with your career. Mm -hmm. It really, you know, guidance is important in every aspect mm -hmm. of your life, so I think that's so cool. Mm -hmm. And what were some of your biggest challenges getting into commercial radio? Maybe especially as a black woman, do you think there were any issues, any challenges also that were specific? to you as a black woman and then just in general as well look again for me because i was poached it's hard for me to answer a question like that because mm -hmm. i didn't fight to get into the industry yeah. um i didn't have to uh, and i'm not saying everyone does this um trying to pull someone out for me to get in no yeah. It was a divine blessing it was like we mentioned it was my destiny um, which I, I strongly believe so for me there was no fighting and uh, you know um, feeling like I'm getting into the wrong space mm -hmm. so I can't really answer that question although staying relevant um, staying I mean, eight years is a long time. Um, it really is. And I'm so honored and so blessed to have had this journey, um, long-term journey. But um, I think it's the remaining consistent. Um, and that's just by bettering myself each and every single time. It's not, like I always say, it's not about me. Yeah. It's, it's you, the people who listen, who support me, yeah. um, who cheer me, the crunch family, yeah. they are the ones that mold the person that I need to be and better every single day. Yeah. Um, so that's the only thing in, in trying to be as consistent and as relevant as possible. Yeah. And that is essentially being me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that's actually what gives you staying power is understanding that it's not about you mm -hmm. so you're able to mold and shift with the times mm -hmm. as well and still stay authentic mm -hmm. to who you are mm -hmm. you know it's not being selfish in that in that um, space 100 percent yeah if you weren't in radio Ooh. what do you think you could do Ooh. well if i wasn't in radio what do i think i'll be doing in all honesty um probably a sports presenter okay Oh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, I receive, I receive news anchor um, because I study journalism. So news is embedded in me. Uh, journalism is embedded in me. Probably uh, um, on your 8 p.m. primetime news. Um, I'll probably be... Uh, hmm... It is because radio is my everything. Um, oh, and, and it seems like the media <laughs> space will definitely because I guess you were born for it. Because I actually yeah. can't see you in anything else. I mean, you've spoken about how you love to um, spin cars, yes. which is so crazy to me. <laughs> like, what? I can't even imagine it, but it's probably the dopest thing to watch. Love it. Love oh my it. God. Hey, maybe talking about cars mm -hmm. maybe like a, a manager of a particular dealership i won't mention brands but okay. i love my german cars okay i'm just okay. saying okay. probably probably mm -hmm. like a manager at a dealership uh, yeah. sales consultant that'll be selling so many cars Yo, wouldn't be funny it. right mm -hmm. nah yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no I'm, I'm 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 reaching here yeah, just yeah, trying yeah. to get out of the out the of media the <laughs> you know one of the biggest issues that i've identified yeah you know within within uh 
the community of black women within Africa on African soil and in the diaspora mm -hmm. is that we are fighting this fight and we've been fighting it for a long time. It's mm -hmm. you know, especially become quite mainstream on social media with the natural hair movement sure. and the movement to push the appreciation of dark skin mm -hmm. girls as well. As a dark-skinned woman, mm. being in the public eye, mm. you know, um, I think that it's something that you can relate to and also understand sure. as a, from a, a first-hand experience. Sure. It's been one of our biggest fights for a long time, mm. and I think the root cause is so it goes, it runs very, very, very deep. Yes, because it comes the history of it, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's so extensive. I can't even get into it because yeah. it's a lot. But you know, going forward as a black woman, yeah. what is what is your vision mm. for the future of the black woman, the, the self-image mm. and how we see ourselves? I love your um, question. I love your question. Do you, do you, do you, yeah. Is it something that you see that we're getting closer to and how do we need to keep pushing to get to that point? I really love your question. So I did a voiceover for Dawn and they were talking about the complexions of the black woman and the projections that we've we've all individually had with the light skin dark skin and bringing it back to myself like you mentioned being a dark skinned um girl my mother's light skinned gorgeous 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 and all of us <laughs> all all of us are so dark um from from my dad Mm. And I'd, I'd, I'd always ask, I grew up asking my mom, how come you like, mom, I want to be like you, you know, I want to, you know, mm. and it's funny because now I, I can answer that question and I wish my mom had this kind of con contentment in her response to me. Because the response usually, well, for me, is like, no, you're my child. You're beautiful just the way you are. Mm -hmm. But as a mind, you, uh, as a kid, you, your mind is more curious as to, but why am I darker than you? It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. I want to be light like you, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and for me, I think if my mom at the time just said, my baby, you are beautiful the way that you are. Mm -hmm. And it's not even about me being light and you being dark. Yes, that is the realities of our lives. We see color, right? Mm -hmm. But this is who you are and own it, Mwanaga. Mm -hmm. Own it. I think someone just saying own it mm -hmm. at a young age was what was missing for me. Mm -hmm. Embrace it. You know, there always needs to be that one person that stands up for you and I to be able to be courageous in our paths. Mm -hmm. um, you know, your Lupita Nyongos, your, there's so many people so I can, Lauren Hill, Lauren Hill. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. there will always be someone that needs to stand up for you yeah. to be able to understand. So I didn't have that in my mother because she maybe was going through the same thing of, but how do I speak to my child about, mm -hmm. Um, embracing her dark skin mm -hmm. just because she sees it and she grew up seeing light mm -hmm. does not take away from her shine mm -hmm. and when Dawn asked me to be the voice of um, you know this colorism uh, ad that they had it gave me goosebumps because in that ad they had kids who were given a face to color they were given all different kinds of complexions mm -hmm. um, and crayons to use majority of the kids went for the yellow crown. Mm. Mm. And there was only one kid that used the brown crown. And for me, that shook me. One child out of 15 kids, one took a brown crown. And it goes back to your question in terms of the vision and where we need to go as young black women is starting to have conversations that kids don't understand. Mm -hmm. Going there, mm. they're so smart, it scares me how yeah. kids are so smart. We underestimate them. We really do. Mm. Having these grown conversations, I know um, it goes with context, um, but allowing kids to be unapologetic of who they are, mm -hmm. the color of your skin mm -hmm. makes you who you are. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right, like in the industry, um, it's not even a question anymore. For me, 
understanding and being bold in who I am and how I look, mm -hmm. whether it is wanting them to not make my skin lighter when it comes to images, um, or them over wanting to darken the skin mm -hmm. to make it fit a certain criteria, mm -hmm. take me as I am mm -hmm. or else I'm not doing it. You know, it's things like that. So for me, understanding that it starts with your yes or no, it, start with, it starts with your choice and your thinking mm -hmm. and conversations that you're having with yourself mm -hmm. and others. Mm -hmm. Your surrounding as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know if <laughs> uh, surrounding and conversations for me is so important because it triggers your mind and thinking in so many ways and your vision. Um, in not being afraid of who you are, how you speak, how you look. Um, it's so self-rooted, like it's so engraved, like you're saying, mm -hmm. that the only person that can break that barrier and start a new journey in a breath of fresh air is you. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Is you. Mm. Yeah. Even, even more so for you, you know, I think it, it, it's because you're in a position, you're a public figure. A, a, a dark skinned mm. female public figure mm. and that's a big that's a big deal mm. especially in the generation and the the i don't want to say political climate but just mm. the climate the social climate sure. it's quite a big deal sure. and it, it does a lot for young and dark, dark skinned girls and it's so important 100 percent. but i think we we are probably at the best time of our lives um empowering um, especially women who are darker skinned to embrace who they are. Yeah. I think now more than ever. Mm -hmm. um, I think the yearn for dark skinned women is a cry that's been cried for the longest time and now it's starting to happen yeah. slowly. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. look, I, I, <laughs> I love women who are so sure about who they are mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter the complexion of your skin. Yes, it's our conversation now, um, but the surety that you have in yourself, and I think now is the biggest and the best time to rise because um, there is no better time than now, if not now, then when. Um, yeah. So true. Yeah. So true. What is the legacy that you want to leave behind? What's your ultimate goal? Like, what's the thing that you know if you were to leave this world, you would want to have left behind? This narrative or um, question of what legacy do you want to leave behind? Mm -hmm. Something that I sleep on each and every single day. Mm -hmm. I ask myself that question, what are you leaving behind? Um, it's not an easy question to answer, yeah. you know, as much as it's easy to ask. Mm -hmm. Look, I believe that whatever you feel connected to when it comes to Kutso Teledi. When you think about Kutso Teledi, and I'm gone, right? I'm not here anymore. What you remember me for is for you to keep. Mm. For me, I, look, someone can come and debate with me about leaving a defined legacy. It's impossible. Yeah. You leave a seed different seeds in people's hearts, minds, bodies, and souls of yourself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I really, I, I pray, and if anything happens to me, um, that you who's watching this right now, and you having this conversation with me, mm -hmm. can say what Kutsa left with me was A, B, C, D. That you can take. Yeah. I don't need to know. Yeah. Um, so that for me is my legacy, what I left you with, mm -hmm. be it motivation, inspiration, mm -hmm. information, entertainment, um, whatever the case may be, whether you love my eyeshadow, because I love <laughs> eyeshadow, um, whether it be the voice, that's my legacy to you. Mm -hmm. I, I pray to only give and leave my best. Um, my purpose and my calling is all that I wake up and pray for. I'm God-fearing mm -hmm. and God knows what seed is left in each and every single person from the moment I, I got onto radio, mm -hmm. um, from the moment you got to hear my voice or see my face. Mm -hmm. So whatever that you feel um, is what you take away from me and you've, you've learned something, it's left you inspired, mm -hmm. um, it's left you thinking, then that's my legacy to you. Um, and it's not about financial aid, it's not about, it's, 
it's 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 not the frivolous things. Mm-hmm. It's it's the soulful things mm-hmm. that I'm I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Um, so that question, what legacy would you like to leave behind? The legacy that you take away from me now is what I want to leave behind. That's actually it's so profound because it's it's completely selfless. It's not about like oh I want people to say this and that. It's it's a it's a one on one thing. It's about yeah. each individual person, and you can't control that. Exactly. You know, even when you get on radio, when you say what you say, you can't control how people are gonna receive it. Hundred percent. You know, you can only hope that people resonate with what you're saying authentically that's you know coming from the heart so that's that's really honest i think it's very transparent i think that's so important what makes you a girl boss what makes me a girl boss kuto is a girl boss because she believes that Whatever she deserves, the world will serve it. Mm-hmm. Quote is a girl boss because she understands her purpose and her calling and respects it, honors it. Um, Quote is a girl boss because she is she is one with herself and growing to be more than one with herself. You know when when you have this thing of an outer body experience and you start watching yourself from uh, let's say this camera and you're watching yourself through interviews and conversations she's sure of herself yes she can be moved um hated bashed on um my imperfections might be pointed out but she is certain in who she is and god fearingly so and that's what makes Kutso Teledia girl boss. Um, I don't want to follow the masses because once you remove the the M, what does that say? <laughs> <laughs> what does that say? Didn't see that one. You know, but yes. you know, and understanding that life is about the now. When you're a girl boss, you live for the now. Mm-hmm. Now promise tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You're not. Anything could happen right here and right now. Um, she's a girl boss because she learns and wants to learn. Um, she's motivated and inspired. She reads energies. And she's unafraid to say, no, that's not for me. Mm-hmm. And she respects that when it's your time and her time, it's her time. And if it's meant for you, it will be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's what makes anyone a girl boss is to realize that it's beyond being a boss, but being being one with yourself, unapologetically so, and defying the odds that you come through and go go through, and respecting yourself, your temple, mm-hmm. your mind, feeding it, um, and knowing your weaknesses and being honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. That's a girl boss. You can, you can throw spears, you can do whatever it is, but she's not moved or shaken by um, someone who doesn't know what it's like to be that boss. Yeah. Hasn't placed themselves in the shoes of the boss. So until you realize that no one can harm me until they can say they understand me and have been in my shoes, yeah. that's a girl boss. Yeah. yeah. Mm, absolutely. Yeah.